I do not want to have kids in this world. But the Lord spoke to us and there needs to be light in this world. Mm -hmm. We can only do our best and give ourselves grace and give our kids grace. Basically trust in the Lord that he's going to take care of them because mm -hmm. ultimately it's not up to us. I have a lot of friends that are boy moms. In a way, they feel a bigger responsibility to raise a man of God. I tell our friends, just text them like, it's a boy, it's a girl. You, okay, you're not going to do that. It's it's going to be a, like an elaborate surprise. You're not just going to be like a mass group text. Hey, y'all, it's a boy. Nah, <laughs> that ain't you right there. Welcome back to the Salty Podcast. Today, I have Hunter here with me again. Hello, Hello. everyone. Hello. And as y'all can see, if y'all have been seeing our other content that's been posted recently, we just announced that we are expecting baby number two. Holy cannoli. <laughs> yeah. Holy cannolis is right, Holly. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't believe that it's out there now. I'm so excited that we can finally talk about it. You know? I know. Yeah, me too. So right now, filming this podcast, I'm about 10 weeks along. But by the time this is out there, I'll be almost like 12 weeks. Yeah. I did like that. It's been like our little secret for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Have you enjoyed that? Because you are a very private person. I am. And yeah. so... So this whole like life, I guess, <laughs> is a little difficult for me. But yeah. So I have enjoyed us keeping it a little secret. And I'm like, why do we have to announce? Can't we just like, people just start figuring it out, yeah. you know? We're like, wait, does she have a bump? Right. And see, that's, I'd rather just get it out there yeah. because I don't want to read comments. Because mm -hmm. what if, because that's happened before. People are like, oh my gosh, did you see that? Like there was a video months ago where my sweatshirt was maneuvered in a certain way and it looked like I had a bump mm -hmm. and I obviously was not even pregnant. Yeah. And it hurt my feelings reading comments being like, oh, she's gained weight. I see a bump, I think. Like, yeah. You know, so I'm just like, let's not <laughs> do yeah, it that right. way. But yeah, Hunter's been just so nonchalant about it all. Yeah. But it's been fun telling our family and friends. Mm -hmm. And honestly, though, we've just gotten to, I have appreciated the time that it has been just us knowing. Yeah. Because we've gotten to just have those conversations without the outside world. I don't know. Knowing. Knowing. Yeah. Um, just kind of figuring out what we want mm. and all of that, like how we want to do it. But I will say there's... Not a reason we really waited. Like I know a lot of people are skeptical and they're like, oh, you should always wait for till you're out of the first trimester. Like even my doctor was saying that, like, I think at my eight week appointment, heard the heartbeat mm -hmm. and he was like, okay, you could tell like your close family, but maybe, you know, don't tell everybody yet. I think that's just from a medical standpoint. But for me, like with Ivy, we announced at six weeks, you know? Yeah. But. Like on Facebook or whatever? Yeah, on social media. Yeah. I was like, as soon as we heard the heartbeat, I think I was like six weeks in a few days. Mm -hmm. So I we're not waiting this long to announce because of that. It's just how it worked out with the holidays and all of that. But honestly, I've been so nonchalant about it. Like mm -hmm. it, the time has gone by so fast. It really has. Yeah. So fast. I know. Like how am I 10 weeks? I don't know. The baby's going to be here before we know it. Yeah. I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Because I do, I do believe like every life deserves to be celebrated. So mm -hmm. even if, I think if we had all of our ducks in a row at eight weeks, we would have announced. But with the podcast and stuff, we were just like timing wise, yeah. it just worked out to wait. To wait. But yeah, so now that it's out there, we can talk about it. I mean, how are you feeling? I'm excited. Very, very excited. Are you feeling like baby boy, baby girl? You know, I don't know. For like the past week or so, I've really been thinking boy. Yeah. And I don't know why. I think it's because your pregnancy has already been so different. Yeah, it has. If you go off like the wives' tales. We then, do need to do that. Yeah, we should do to, that for, for a video. Mm -hmm. or yeah, and for fun. But um, if you go off the wives' tales, then ev almost everything pointed to you having a boy the first time. Yeah. And it was a, and girl, it was a girl, obviously. Yeah. And but this time it's opposite. This time it's opposite. So I wonder if you're just opposite the wives' tales yeah. or... I mean, does that stuff actually matter? Right. Probably not. You mm -hmm. know. So I don't know. I'm yeah. excited to see. I'm I am really excited to find out what it is. That's what I'm most excited for. Yeah. Which I, mean, I, I I didn't really feel that way with Ivy though. You were just too like whatever. I was. Yeah, I didn't really care. We well, we both wanted a girl. Mm -hmm. So I think I was more hesitant about finding out yeah. for like gender disappointment. Right. Yeah. But this time. But this time we I, talked about it. Yeah. We're not going to be. I don't feel like we would have gender disappointment because no. we're literally like. 
okay. Yeah. Girl, boy. Because we had, the reason with Ivy is because we had that name picked out and we just wanted our little Ivy J. Mm -hmm. And so now that we have her, I feel like, okay, a boy, girl, right. I'm excited for yeah. both, you right. know. Mm -hmm. I just, I can't even <laughs> fathom that we're, because we went from saying that we would only be one and done into now I'm pregnant. Yeah. Like that yeah. is mind blowing, honestly. <laughs> I mean, we know how so it works. Think, so you think <laughs> right. you always say that. But yeah. see, to me, that's like, oh, I mean, we just changed our mind. Like if you were pregnant with our fourth kid, uh -huh. then that would be crazy that we said we were one and done. And like, oh, number five's on the way or whatever. Right. I but don't like, know. It's just the second one. Like it's I not know. that much of a difference. But it's going to change a lot. Oh, yeah. Because I mean, we're a so... lot of stuff will change, but the number is I know. We're better. just so used to it being the three of us. Our little with Ivy. I mean, mm -hmm. she'll be three in March. And I guess I assume that we'd always have like them close together and that's still close together. Yeah. But in my mind from the beginning, it was like, oh, if it has to be two and two, like two under two. Oh, girl. Wow. Uh, no, I don't know. That was, I think that's just like a pressure of the, the world thing. that puts yeah. on. Yeah. But I love this age gap. I'm so excited for it mm -hmm. to like everybody I see. And even whenever we secretly knew we were pregnant and we would meet people and they would have, I would like look at their age, their gap. age gaps yeah. and then be like, oh, how do you like that? Mm, yeah. <laughs> and then it would like get me excited, you know? Yeah. Oh, I'm just so excited. I feel so, I feel such a peace about it. Mm -hmm. And we did, cause we can go into what happened two months ago. Yeah. Um, we did have a miscarriage. That was my first known miscarriage. Um, and cause now having that, like looking at, I'm like, well, gosh, I wonder if I had mm -hmm. other chemical pregnancies before. Yeah. I really don't like that term, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's a loss, you know, mm -hmm. I was probably like five ish weeks along when we miscarried and I, it was so odd cause I was like two weeks late. So I didn't even know I was pregnant until I did, you know? Right. So finding out. And then finding out I lost the baby all within the few days. It was like a roller coaster of emotions for sure. But looking back, even in that moment, like I, I did have a few days, sad days, mm -hmm. you know, of just honestly, because I felt like it was my fault. And so all the questions were going through my head. My blood sugar was high because I'm a type one diabetic. And so I blamed myself a lot. And I was just thinking of all the things because we were in L.A. Mm -hmm. and just the travel. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, the stress. Did yeah. I do this? Right. Yeah. But, I haven't even thought about it like that. Yeah. And so that's why I struggled mm -hmm. the most. But then I just had I just like got in the word a lot and I had such a peace come over me because I've experienced I've walked through not walked through that, but I've seen people walk through it. Close people to me, like friends and family members and whatever. And I know it always doesn't work out this way, but a lot of the miscarriages they had when they got pregnant with their baby who's here, they wouldn't have had that baby if they didn't ever miscarry, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And so I had, I know that's not the case for everybody, but I had that thought and I don't know. I just had such a peace come over me. Like, you know, your rainbow's coming, like mm -hmm. the baby that is meant to be here is going to be here. Right. And so that had to happen for that child to be here, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, cause I even think with Ivy, like when we got pregnant with Ivy, if we didn't get pregnant that month, we wouldn't have had Ivy. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So whenever we found out we were pregnant, it was only two months later. And that's like a blessing in and of itself. Cause I know some women, it takes a long time and my heart goes out to them, but I had such a peace you know, because typically I thought that after experiencing the miscarriage that when I got pregnant that I would struggle yeah. and be so scared. But yeah. I told you, I was like, I feel so good. Mm -hmm. Like I found out and was happy and joyful. And yeah. I feel like that only came from the Lord because I knew yeah. that. And that's just, it, honestly, like it's just not even you as a person. Right. Like, yeah, you're happy and joyful, mm -hmm. but you are like one of the biggest worriers that I know. <laughs> no, I know. So it was yeah, shocking. It was. And that was like a testimony to me for mm. myself of, okay, this is the Holy Spirit, you right. know? And um, I was like reading the word every day and just saturating on that. And so I feel like that helped you prepare me. And I don't know, like, because by the world standards, you would feel like I didn't have a piece about it, but I did. It was so unexplainable. Mm-hmm. 
And so, and I even was like, even if something happens to this pregnancy, I feel like I would have a peace still, but that was at the beginning, yeah, <laughs> you know, because right. I will say I, I wasn't as far along. Yeah. And so it was easier for me because I wasn't really connected yet. You know, like I had just found out. Right. Mm-hmm. But like this time, like if something were to happen even right now, I would be so devastated. Oh, yeah. You know? It'd be a lot harder. It would be harder. To deal with. And so I know, and like, because that's what I wanted to say, like every loss is a loss. And I think at first I felt like I couldn't even grieve the mm-hmm. miscarriage because. Because you were so early. Yeah. And I was like. That's not fair to the women who lose their babies at even eight weeks or 10 weeks or, you know, have a stillborn, stillborn, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, but then I just was like, no, I mean, we can't. You can't like diminish your feelings just because of somebody else. Right. They have had it better or worse. Exactly. Just like somebody thinks that they're going through the hardest season in their life Mm -hmm. doesn't take mean that so-and-so is also not going through their own hard season, yeah, you know, right. it could look different. Yeah. So that's what I want to say too. Cause I feel like that is a thing out there. It's like, Oh, well you weren't, you didn't hear the heartbeat yet. So you shouldn't mm-hmm. really be sad about it. Right. You know, but I had to really talk myself into like knowing my feelings that I were feeling were valid. I think now having gone through a, a miscarriage, it's like you feel bad for people who go through that. But until you also go through when you truly don't know what it feels like, right? you know? Yeah. And so it just makes me want to hug everybody even more that struggle with infertility and lose babies and gosh, you know? So now we're pregnant with our rainbow baby. Yeah. And I'm so excited. I can't, I don't even know what to say because I'm just like, what? How am I I pregnant right now? Yeah. I know. Honestly, like... I don't know. It, it's still, I guess I just have that peace about it too. Yeah. It's honestly hard to even like wrap my head around. Like when you were this far along with Ivy, we were already like starting on the nursery. We were buying stuff. Mm-hmm. We were doing the things, you know, and this time we're not. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, I know that you're pregnant, but mm-hmm. to me, it still feels like it's like just like out of, out of reach, mm-hmm. you know? I see my belly growing. Right. And, the first few weeks were rough. Like I was so sick. Mm -hmm. And now just the last few days, I'm like, okay, maybe I'm getting better. Cause I had coffee again because I had a really bad aversion to coffee. And now I'm drinking again. So I'm like, okay, that's a sign that I'm you're on the men on the men. Hopefully he said this morning, he was like, don't say that. Don't say it yet. I'm like, (laughs) please don't jinx yourself because (laughs) you are like sick as a dog for like two weeks. Yeah. But and I also Ivy had a, and then I had like a sinus infection. So I was on yeah. antibiotics and Ivy was, it was hard. Yeah. Thank you for sticking. Of through. course. This time it just feels so different. I know it does because feel we're completely not, different. I mean, we're different people than we were when you were pregnant. I mean, I was, the first we were time. 22. Right. And so much like even maturity, mm-hmm. I feel like we've changed. Definitely. From then to yeah. now. And which then you wouldn't think you get more mature. Right. You can know you get wiser and older. But my sister did on my 25th birthday. Um, Scout said, congratulations, your brain has fully developed. Yeah. Because apparently by the age of 25, your brain like yeah. fully develops, yeah. I guess. Fun fact. You might want to fact track that though. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have read that somewhere. Like your brain doesn't fully. I think, I think that's right. It, it may not be 25, but it's, uh, it's somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah, whenever we had Ivy, we really str- were struggling, and financially, all the like all the way around. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for this season to bring a new baby in the world, and I'm so excited to see Ivy be a big sister. I know. What are you looking forward to the most? Ivy being a big sister. Ivy being a big sister, but also the baby scrunch, I like know. the little booty pats when yeah. they're. Up here, and you just—that's like your favorite. When when you hold somebody Aww. else's baby, you're like, "Oh, Luke," and you have it like sitting up in your patents butt. That's like, I know. Well, it's, I feel like that's just a in a non creepy way, you know. Oh yeah, it's just the that's how you hold. They're just so cute. Like our friends are about to be here, and they both had baby girls, and so we're gonna get to have some baby snuggles. I'm so excited. Gosh, what are you most excited about? I don't know, man. Right I feel now, like you want to know the gender I do. first. I do want to know it so bad. And we've talked about that. We don't have to go into it on here, but 
Yeah, I'm just really excited about that. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do know why. Well, I mean, you can give a little, because <laughs> like, okay. they don't know what you're talking yeah. about. So Devin and I have had this long like conversation about it, and I think I'm so excited to know the gender because that, in a way, kind of like predicts what we do for the, not the rest of our lives, but mm -hmm. like the next, you know, 15, 20 years of um, just what they're interested in. Like Ivy is already showing interest in certain like extracurricular things mm -hmm. is kind of what I'm talking about. So like no matter if it's a boy or a girl and what they end up wanting to do, I'm just looking forward to that because I'm just the kind of person that I like being passionate about something. And I love when Ivy shows passion about the two things that she loves, you know, I'm just like all in on it. I love She's in gymnastics yeah. right now. Yeah. And what else are you talking about? Just the way that, and I know she's only two, but like the way that she sings and oh, acts. Gosh, I know. Like I could definitely see her wanting to do that in the future. Mm -hmm. So just those two things. Like I just want to support her to the fullest um, and the new baby with whatever he mm -hmm. or she wants to do. So and that's so I, what I'm looking forward to is like, because what are if we it's gonna a girl, do? you're like do? thinking, what are we going to do? I mean, because, you know, I mean, she could want to play softball or dance or whatever. Right. But then if it's a little boy, you're thinking, okay, maybe he'll want to ride dirt bikes. Yeah. So I mean, girls can do that too. Oh, I know. Well, we thought we, we try to get Ivy, but yeah, she's see, just I, not. I'm already convinced that Ivy is like not that girl. Yeah. And that's great. I have no problem with that at all. I do want her to know how to ride a dirt bike. I will <laughs> she say that. Like me. As like a life skill. Like a pit bike. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I do want her to do that, but like, I don't care if she ever wants to like you were ride ride on a bike by three she's almost three mm -hmm. and she won't even ride her strider yeah my dad put me on a dirt bike the dad turned a month old that's wild and i mean well maybe that's what we should have did with ivy yeah. he really wanted her to ride. yeah and then i got my first dirt bike for my third birthday and ivy is not there mm -mm. she's not there yeah okay with me yeah no i mean it's okay with me too no like, i'm saying in a funny way because you yeah. know how that worries me thing, yeah. yeah i'm just like yeah. Maybe not. But then I don't know, gymnastics. I was about she to say, can... the first time we went to gymnastics and I saw them girls on there, I'm like, this ain't no safer than riding a dirt bike. You cannot convince me that it is. Yeah. You can you can't. Right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> I would even beg that be a little more dangerous. Be a little more dangerous, yeah. Because if she's riding a dirt bike, like if she gets like she's if she in a was helmet, to ride, she's in gear. Yeah. All if that. she gets like to the to like a pro level, okay. Mm -hmm. But, like, she's wearing gear. She's got a helmet on. Like, when them girls be swinging up on them things and they ain't got nothing on, you come down and land on your head. I know. You're, you're that's a bad yeah. day. Yeah. I'm, I'm so excited because then from there, I feel like we'll be able to plan more. But I still feel like, like, with the nursery, because with Ivy, we knew how the nursery was going to be, like, all that. But maybe mm -hmm. it's because I don't know the gender yet. So maybe when that comes, like, I could see us waiting really last minute to do the nursery. Like, uh, yeah. that's how I feel right now. It's just so Boy. nonchalant about it. It's just. I'm just so curious what we're going to do because we use our guest room so often. Mm -hmm. Like, so often. And. And we even used this room as a guest. Like, because we typically have multiple people staying. Because that's what we feel call to do sometimes is like yeah. just to host mm -hmm. and that's a way that we can like love on people and just be the feet of jesus you know right. but it's we're not gonna be able to do that because right. this is now the podcast room i mean we could put we could put an bags. air mattress in yeah. here but the problem with this room is the door is glass so you can see through it yeah which i mean that's okay I i'm know. sure people don't really care that much but mm -hmm. i mean it's still not ideal but it's the office now and it's full of stuff. And Ivy's room. Like, people and, sleep in Ivy's bed, which isn't ideal either. Right. Well, because then she has to sleep with us. Right. But used to, she had a crib. So there was, like, a whole space for blow-up mattresses. But yeah. now, like, that is her space. Right. That Her toys are in there. Mm -hmm. All of that. And so now we're just like, hey, so you, you want to get a hotel? Yeah. I hate taking that away from her, you know? Yeah. So now we really only have one room, the guest room, that's usable. Yeah. And we have three couples coming this weekend <laughs> yeah i mean as long as they're like i'm fine you know yeah because i still want to host and whatever but i'm like i just want the other people to be comfortable we're going on a tangent anyways but yeah. it's because we're talking about in the nursery yeah, yeah. and the guest room would become the nursery and so really we just 
it, our life will look different in that way. Mm-hmm. Like we're not going to really have, be, people aren't going to be able to stay with us. Right. If they want to come visit, they'll have to get like Airbnb or hotel or something, mm-hmm. which is fine. I mean, yeah. we do that. Really, like we don't stay with people when we go places. We you know, always get an you're Airbnb. Right. You're right. We have stayed with some people, mm-hmm. but yeah, most of the time we don't. Yeah. I'm just not used to that. I'm just like, I, I want to host. I want to be the hostess with the most. I know. Yeah. Because the problem, like when people come and they, if they don't stay with, we're still on the tangent, but if they don't <laughs> stay with us, then they have to like also rent a car. Uh-huh. There is Uber here where we live, but it's not like a big city. Right. Like you're going to have to wait a while. Uh-huh. There's only a few. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like either that or we have to go get them, bring mm-hmm. them back here anytime we want to hang. Yeah. You know, so it's just inconvenient. Okay, I know we have, we just went off a tangent. Yeah. So we're talking about the nursery. Yeah, we can, <laughs> <laughs> we can build a room in the shop out there. Well, you know, that was an idea for yeah. a while and that got canceled just because I think it's too much work. Yeah, for but. sure. Anyways, let's move on. <clears throat> so where are they going to sleep <laughs> this <laughs> weekend? No. <laughs> All right, I'm kidding. I'm messing uh, with you. We'll move on. What would you say like your fears are? With this second pregnancy or second baby? My biggest fear with pregnancy in general is your health because of your diabetes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just so I worry about that because, like, you were all great and fine and healthy and dandy until you got pregnant with Ivy. And then it's like it hit the fan, you know? (laughs) You had the high blood pressure, which that went away. Yeah. But so that's my biggest concern is that you'll just – I mean, what's the likelihood of this? I don't know, but you'll just develop something else Mm -hmm. or something else will pop out. You know, you had this your whole life. You didn't know either. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's just the thing that I worry about the most and the baby's health, obviously. Mm -hmm. And since you are type one, our kids being susceptible to it. That worries me too. Yeah. And that's something I've really had to give to the Lord because I I... Every, even if, if Ivy's really thirsty, mm-hmm. like if there's things that I pick up on, I'm like, oh my gosh, do we need to take her to the hospital just to get checked? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Kind of vibe. And I mean, whenever, after I had Ivy in the hospital, they, her stuff was fine. Mm-hmm. So And I she's think, been fine so far. But now so. we didn't know I was type one. So now True. it's more in my head, like, okay, this baby could come out and have the sugars. Yeah. And I'm like, the stuff I have to do, like the pump and all of that, like I cannot imagine. Like there are people who message me and they're like, my two-year-old just got diagnosed. And uh, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I couldn't imagine that. That is so hard. But c- can you imagine? I mean, Ivy fights us taking antibiotics. Yeah. So imagine us having to give her like a shot. Right. You know? I know. And you know, it's traumatizing for the kids because they don't know that they're not okay without it. Mm-hmm. You know, they learn that eventually, sure, but... You know, two year old and Ivy's two and a half, and yeah, you know, that would she'd be traumatized mm-hmm. for sure. We'd have to, you know, I, th- I think she would eventually learn. But she sees you do it too, so that's probably a help. So the kids that the parents aren't. Mm-hmm. That's I think at that harder. point we'd have to get a dog, like a tra- not Dolly cannot be <laughs> trained to do that. No, we'd have to like get another, add another dog yeah. to the fam. I know to do that, but that's a lot of work too. Anyways, that's your worry is my health. Mm -hmm. I would say my worry is just at more responsibility. Like I remember going after we had Ivy and that shift in feeling responsibility. Mm -hmm. Life was not like we knew it when we had Ivy. So now we're used to that. We're used to having that added responsibility, but it's going to be even more. It's going to be doubled. Doubled. (laughs) And the responsibility as a Christian Mm -hmm to raise your kids in this world. Like that's what almost stopped us from even having kids. Yeah. Like I remember we went a while being like, I just do not. Cause it was 2020. I mean, I thought like the purge was about to happen, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we were like, I do not want to have kids in this world. But the Lord spoke to us and you know, he was like, there needs to be light in this world. Mm-hmm. That's cause I mean, that's what we're here for. To be We're not here just to have so. picket fence lives and keeping up with the Joneses and all that stuff. We're here as Christians, like to live for him. Yeah. And so in that sense, the responsibility, that's what I am thinking about having a boy or girl, because I have a lot of friends that are boy moms and in a way they feel a bigger responsibility to raise a man of God. Yeah. 
because there's, I feel like that is so hard to come by these days. There are plenty of men have gone out there, Mm -hmm. but I mean, that is a, I mean, you know. Yeah, that is true. I haven't thought about that. Yeah. So I feel like I would understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's. Harder. Yeah. Because there's different challenges. There's different things that you have to deal with. And. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe people that have one of each or more than one of each, obviously, could answer that question. Mm -hmm. But then again, I feel like every kid is going to be different, too. Yeah. I think it's hard to, like, seeing even Christian households, their children don't, aren't Christian, Mm -hmm. you know? And because that's something I never want to force. Right. On Ivy or on this new baby, like... That is something that, and I've talked to you, I just sounded very British, talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> My mom never forced it right. on us. It was always by her actions, and she just prayed for us, mm-hmm. you know? And so I feel like even if I wasn't a Christian, she would still love me. Cause, and that, I mean, that just shows the what a true Christian looks like. Right. You love them anyways. Mm-hmm. That is something that I'm just going to have to pray about. Because it is a, such a responsibility mm-hmm. to do the right thing so your kids see the right thing right, and everything. But at the end of the day, it's not up to us. Yep. We can only do our best. You're right. And so they're going to have to choose for themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I definitely agree with you. Um, I don't want to force it on them either. It's going to be – it's hard because there is a fine line between – like raising them up in the way that they should go. Mm-hmm. And like in that case, your mom, yeah, praying for you and you seeing her and how she acts and what she does. Yeah, it's tough. I, I had a friend in high school that I think their parents were more like a, more in towards the forceful side. Like legalistic side or um, of religion. I, guess. I feel like, see, I feel like I with know. the legalistic side too, it would. I feel like that would have pushed me away. Yeah. Like all the rules and just... The rules, You yeah. aren't seeing Christian faith like as what it is. Yeah. You're seeing it as a just... A rule book. A rule book. Yeah. And I mean, you don't... You're not experiencing the freedom that truly comes from believing in Jesus. Right. And following him. Mm-hmm. So, okay, continue about your... So training. anyway, I've been over there several times and it was just I don't want to necessarily say like it weirded me out but I was just like I knew then I'm like okay I don't know if I want to do this with my children Mm -hmm. because that verse in the Bible about you know raise up your children the way they would go and they won't depart from it Mm -hmm. and I feel like even in that it's like there might be a season of where they fall off Mm -hmm. but they would always come back right. to their roots. Yeah. And that's something I'm not going to be able to understand unless we go through it with mm-hmm. our kids. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, maybe I'm sure there are people out there listening that that has happened or their kids have fallen away. I'm just so curious. Like, yeah. I want to have mom, I'm going to have mom on here and talk to her about it. Yeah. Well, I think one thing about the showing, like your kids seeing the way that you act, mm-hmm. a lot of times if you treat, your kid the way that you want to be treated or the way that you would have wanted your parents to treat you, then I feel like they are going to act that way. You know, I mean, yeah, you, and you make mis everybody makes mistakes and like the parent or the kid. Okay. Whatever. But in general, like if you're a genuine, like kind hearted person that acts out of love and not out of anger, mm-hmm. then I feel like your kids are going to follow in your footsteps more than likely. That's not always the case. And I'm sure that there are people listening that did treat their kids that way and their kids aren't acting like that now. Yeah. But I just mean in in that way that they may come back to that. And basically if you act like Christ to your kids, mm-hmm. then they will grow up and act the same way. Yeah. So that's what I try to do the most, like with Avi and Granny, she's too. And I feel like in a way we're experiencing exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. We can only do our best and, you know, show by our actions. And now this is 
not like a true example of what we're talking about because again, Ivy's two. Mm -hmm. Just for example, like how we try to act and do all these things, but then Ivy acts out. Mm -hmm. She's in the stage of there's some things she acts out about or whatever. And we're just like, where did this come from? Like she didn't, this isn't learned behavior. Like she's just experienced her own emotions and all these things. But well, she does. She is around other people, mm-hmm. like with her, and that's it. School and yeah. you know, just other times at church, she's around other kids. So she see it is learned, not necessarily from us, mm-hmm. but it could be learned from other kids. Yeah, you know? I mean that's true, but still, we're imperfect, so we're yeah. going to experience. We're sinners. Yeah, you know, oh, and yeah. so I mean. Just yesterday, long story short, Ivy had a tantrum, and it was a long, it was a spread out, it was long in the car. And, <laughs> Seven hour car drive. Yeah, and we both eventually overreacted. I mm-hmm. feel like it took us a while to get there. We were patient yeah. with her, and we tried, you know, we tried our best. But eventually, you're in the car, and that's just the terrible circumstance. Like every parent knows, yeah. you're in the car, like all bets are off, pretty much. And we did. I mean, I did. I will say, I overreacted mm-hmm. eventually. And it was finally, after I did that, I was like, all right, I'm pulling over. Yeah. I'm pulling pulled over, over and we're stopping. I don't care how long it takes, but we're resetting mm-hmm. and we are going to start over. And, you know, and what I, I love, apologize to right, her. Is, that was important. Is yeah. you, she heard you apologize. Mm-hmm. And so you were inside and I actually told her I was sorry. Yeah. And she was, and then she apologized to me and was like, I'm sorry, Mama, for not being a good listener. And that just broke yeah. my heart. And I'm I like, oh, see, the importance of her seeing me yeah. apologize. And then she did the same thing yeah. without me in the car to you mm-hmm. when you yeah. took her. And yeah. I think having a parent that owns up to mm-hmm. their mistakes and apologizes is so important. Yeah. Like, she's teaching me things. Oh, yeah. Every you know? day. And because then I feel guilty for overreacting or whatever but again Mm. we're human but as long as we can go back and be like hey you know that wasn't good of me either i'm sorry you know but i think those traits into when they get older and things like that we just have to hold to those yeah values or Mm. whatever but yeah so that is what i'm (laughs) one of my worries i think i'm always going to kind of be worried about that is the I talk with my hands a lot, sorry, is the responsibility as Christians raising good humans yeah. just to be loving and kind to people mm-hmm. and all of that. Yeah, which that's a innate struggle for me mm-hmm. to begin with. So, like, sometimes when I tell Avi, I'm like, hey, that wasn't nice. Like, you don't need to be rude to people. I'm going like, to talk to myself. <laughs> not that I like go out of my way to be mean to people. I'm not over the top kind to people. Mm-hmm. You know. I mean, you're I'm just, just a you. neutral. You're just meek. Yeah, so I'm like, just neutral. Like I'm gonna have. Like if somebody ran into you mm-hmm. and was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry," you're just like, "It's okay." Yeah. But exactly. me, I'm like, "Oh my gosh, it's okay. You're fine." Yeah. I would go out of my way to let them know it's okay. Don't feel bad. But you're just like, "Oh, it's fine." Yeah. And they might take that as, oh, he's rude. You're Even right. though you, you said it's okay. Yeah. You didn't be like, hey, don't bump into me. Yeah. I'm just like a, I don't know, <laughs> people that are listening and not watching. I'm just a face all the time. He's putting his hand like over his face. Down. Just down. Just like a neutral. Neutral face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. But sometimes, like I get that can come off rude. And I'm also just an introvert. I mean, that's a good way to put it. But... Anyway. And I see Ivy already picking up on some of those traits from both of us. When she's with us and in her safe place, she's very goofy and outgoing and just so funny. Which I am too when I'm with you. You are too, yes. But then even in front of family that she knows and is comfortable with, she'll have those same mannerisms where she just shuts off her face. And so people don't know. They might be like, oh, well, she's a mean little girl, right. you know, because she's not being smiley and all that. And that is what I've had to, because we're her protectors mm-hmm. in this sense. And so I'm like, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Like I remember growing up too and people. Your parents are like, make you perform. Make you perform. <laughs> yeah. And make you, you know, be like, oh, yeah. you better sit, you better tell them bye, go give them a hug. Yeah. And I'm just not like that with Ivy because I learned uh, that did make me, I feel like more of a people pleaser. Right. Like I 
developed that. And even now, just recently, I've stopped hugging people if yeah. I don't feel like I have to. Like, if I don't want to, I'm not going to. But for a while, I just felt like I had to. And I never want her to feel like that. Because then we're going into, you know, the danger zone. Right. Like, if there are people who literally want to hurt her. Right. But she feels like she has to mm-hmm. listen to them. Right. As Christians, I think we can only do our best and give ourselves grace and give our kids grace and just, you know, have faith and basically trust in the Lord that he's going to take care of them because mm-hmm. ultimately it's not up to us. Like we, we do our best. Yes. And, but that's all we can do is just that. They're his before we are. Yeah. There's wait. <laughs> They're his before they are ours. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. (laughs) Perfect. And so that's what, even with this baby, that saying, because I remember going into Ivy's ultrasound before hearing the heartbeat, and I was so anxious. But then I just felt that overcoming me, like, Devin, like, this baby is mine before it's yours. Mm -hmm. So, like, calm down, sweetie. It's okay. Yeah. And so I feel like that going, I already know that. And that's why I feel like I do have such a peace because... Like whatever, even if this baby is supposed to be here for a little while, yeah. As hard humanly, as hard as it would be if something were to happen, in the end, like his will is what is best. Isn't it crazy that like the baby and your stomach and Ivy and I mean everybody obviously, but its whole life is planned out already. That's honestly unfathomable. I know, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like he knows what they're gonna what. It, I don't know what to call it, <laughs> but Gurkha, you know, he knows what the baby's going to do, like as a career and what I was talking about, what it's going to be passionate about. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I'm just like, like how hey, you their characteristic tell me? traits, like, yeah. are they going to be an extrovert? Are they going to be right. an introvert? Mm-hmm. So we're actually going to find out the gender soon. I think they said I have to be 10 and a half weeks to get the genetic testing. Yeah. And um, so we'll do that and then we'll find out the gender. Mm-hmm. Are we going to do a gender reveal? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. Like I'm, I don't want to, but that's just, we go back to me and my personality traits. Mm-hmm. See, so. this is what I feel like we should do. Yeah. Because I'm also, like I said, nonchalant about it. Mm-hmm. With Ivy, I was like, I'm going to have a big gender reveal, all this stuff. Yeah. I do want to find out just us again, intimately. That mm-hmm. was very sweet. Yeah. But this time we won't find out in the ultrasound room. Mm-hmm. We'll probably just get the results because we're not doing the ultrasound, we're doing the blood right. test. Mm-hmm. Get the test. I just want to do something, me and you, where we open the envelope, yeah. find out, mm-hmm. and then we'll just tell tell people. So we're not going to have like a big reveal party Probably thing. not. I'm totally fine with that, dude. I just don't feel like I want to do that this time. I don't either. I'm going to laugh, and we can take us this clip of us speaking about if this. If we end up doing it. If we end up doing it and overlay it. That would be funny. Yeah. But I don't know. I just, I think we'll just do more. Like intentional, yeah. like tell our friends, just text them like, it's a boy, it's a girl. Yeah, okay. But you're not <clears> going <throat> to do that. You can clip that right now. You're not going to text your friends not, and tell them what it is. It's going to be a whole, it's it's going to be a, like an elaborate surprise for each and every person. You're right. not just going to be like a mass group text. Hey, y'all, it's a boy. Nah, <laughs> that ain't you right there. I can tell you that. Okay, maybe, so like. Like, out-of-town friends, I'll just FaceTime. Yeah. Same thing of how we told people we were pregnant. Like, the people we wanted to tell, I FaceTime them and filmed their reaction. Yeah. And, I mean, because we're also content creators, so it's like, are we going <clears> to <throat> film their reactions, you know? Mm-hmm. People are going to be like, I want to see everybody's reaction to You're them right. finding out the gender. And I'm yeah. like, I didn't film it. <laughs> yeah. So we might not. I might just text. I mean, or, that is the thing about a gender reveal is mm-hmm. this. But it's fun. I like to see people's reactions. Like I want to see people's reactions. Yeah. But so I might just FaceTime. Yeah. That sounds like a great idea. Mm-hmm. We'll put it on the calendar. <laughs> Count it. Mark it done. But like with me and you, we'll just do us. Yeah. And then obviously we'll film that. And yeah. that'll probably be like the social media gender reveal is just us finding out. Yeah. Instead of the party. Yeah. So but who knows? I might, we might get excited. After we find out the gender and be like, let's do a party. Let's do a party. Yeah. Perfect. We'll see. Is that, I wonder if that is normal. When you're a second kid, you're just like, whatever. Let us know if that's normal. (laughs) Because 
I'm so chill. I'm like, is something wrong with me? Why am I so chill? Because I'm not a chill person. No, you're I'm not. I'm a planner. I'm hostess with the mostess. I like going all out for things. Like even Ivy's third birthday party this year, I'm like, we're just going to have our, like not even friends here, just our parents, maybe grandparents, have a little cake, a few presents, party. I don't know, but I like this version of you. <laughs> uh, not that I don't like the other one. Mm-hmm. But this one is nice. <laughs> I know. It's so your level. Yeah. So, yeah let's just do that. Chill. I'm about that chillness. But anyway, so we're so excited. <sighs> We'd appreciate your prayers. All you prayer warriors out there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You do not have to pray for us if you don't want to. Yeah. But I just want to say, too, I want to end this by just to all you people in the waiting, in your waiting, that God has a plan for you. And I'm sorry that you're struggling. And the women that have lost babies at, you know, whatever age, whatever pregnancy week, whatever it was, like, my heart goes out to you. We're thinking about you. If y'all want to, on our YouTube channel, we do have the full video out of us finding out. So you can go see that. But thank y'all for being here. Thank you for listening. And you'll hear us next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.